Robbie. We weren't going to invite you down here without getting you to show us what you're good at. It's time <laughs> to chuck through balls around. Good remember nice. these? <laughs> remember <laughs> running around the school playing fields with one of these old leather balls that used to get wet. By the end of the season, they were the size of a medicine ball. Impossible to chuck around. One of the reasons for Bath's dominance in their game so far has been their line out. It's worked superbly well. Things have changed from when we chuck these around. It's now a much more technical discipline. Ben, <coughs> Rob. Take it away. Well, a lot of it has come down to how much analysis players are doing. And, and as a result, because teams know each other's line out so well, the role of this man, the hooker, has become all important. Because if you, you can get into a little tiny space, but if he can't hit the throw, you're never going to win any ball. So we just thought it would be worth talking through a couple of the throws, but also what you're doing. I think a lot of people still think that hookers throw the ball like the good old days. It's all one-handed, and that one's just on there for a bit of balance. But that's not true, is it? Um, no. Um, I think Rafael Ibanez was probably the last guy to, to throw it like that, and you know he was pretty successful. But uh, nowadays, most people are two-handed throwers. Um, personally, I... I'm right-handed, so my right hand towards the back of the ball, and I use the seams as a bit of a guide as to where I place my hands with my thumbs, um, and that's what I try and use to, to generate the spiral to, to get the ball where it needs okay. to go. And if we just sort of show that in action, base, if you go and stand over there, if we show you know, how you impart the, the spiral on the ball, just with a quick one to, to base yeah. there, Oz. <laughs> OK, so obviously that's quite quick, but what, you, what are you trying to do as you finish up the throw? How do yeah, your hands end up? When so you... I say, I've got my right hand at the back and my left hand at the front, and I just use the, use the ball to roll off those, off those thumbs to create that spiral, and it's all about the arm follow-through and leaving your hands pointing where you want the ball to finish up, right. and that, that sort of little bit of roll at the, at the end of the throw to create that spiral and, and that whip of your arms. OK, and if you go around any premiership club when the hookers are practising their, uh, <laughs> their throw, we probably won't do another one, actually, but you, you stay <laughs> like that, chaps. <laughs> 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 when, uh, when you go around any premiership club, you'll see hookers on a Swiss ball. Yeah. And, um, what are they trying to do in, in that whipping movement on, on one of those big gym yeah, balls? It's just to combine all the, you know, the whole body really, to use your core, core muscles to be able to whip that ball to the, to the back when you're throwing 15 or beyond. You, know, you see that, that throw on your own five metre line now where you chuck it almost to the, to the near post. And you need, a, you need a good bit of power to get it there. So it's just trying to train, okay. train your core to get now, the ball there. Now, as the line-out caller, I'm not just going to want you to throw that really fast ball all the time. There's going to be times when I want you to put a bit of shape on it. Have we got some, some video clips here of what I mean? So the first one you're going to see, that's the really fast ball to Courtney Laws. He beats his man into the air, and he wants the ball in his hands before the defence reacts. The second one, there's a defender going up in front of him. So he wants it floated up over the top of Courtney Laws. So what's the difference there? Is it, is it the same throw or is it a different throw that you, that you make? Um, it's a slightly different throw and it's, it's more to do with the, uh, the release point of when you actually start to let go of the ball. If you, if you hold on to it longer, it tends to go flatter, which is when you've got the guy, as Courtney was there, in open space and no one in front of him, you can just whip that ball in. When there's a defensive pod in front, you might need to let go of that a little bit earlier, a bit more shape and drop it in over someone. But you're actually keeping your action yeah. the same the, speed all the, the time. The, the action is exactly the same. You don't want to change too much, otherwise more can go wrong. Brilliant. It's just the release point. OK, so we're going to do one of each of those. So the first one, uh, Becca Hanians are going to be the, the team attacking. You're going to throw to them and it's going to be all about the jumper beating, beating I was going to say his man into the air. That would probably do <laughs> you a distinct disservice. Beating his uh, opponent into the air and you beating him with the pace we'll of the ball. Anyway. So let's have a look. There we go. Lovely ball. Good competition. Now, the second one is the second one we saw on the video yeah. clips. This time, now, what will often happen is instead of it being the jumper that triggers the movement, yeah. occasionally your throw will trigger the movement and That's he'll right. move on a lob and you'll try and pop it over the yep. top. So let's have a we look hope. at that. So on the movement, little loop ball over the top and you've got into the space behind. Yeah. So Bafes, there you have it, the two different types of throws. And actually, you know, a lot of people would have thought that it was all about a slower throw. It's not. Same action, you just released the ball earlier. That's right.